Hey guys, it's Alex Bertson, the Manic Scholar, back again with another Vedic Astrology chart. Today we're looking at Drake, or Aubrey Graham as he's as born by, name-wise. Um, if you don't know who Drake is, he's a rapper, singer, really famous um, hip-hop. Um, so I wanted to do his Vedic astrology today because, uh, most people only know Drake through Western astrology and in that system, he's a Scorpio son, but like I've said on my channel before, the Western tropical Zodiac is inaccurate to the stars now. Um, it's, there's a 24 degree difference between where the stars were then and where they are now. So he's not actually a Scorpio sun. He's actually a Libra sun. So I'll get into that, the details of that. Um, we're going to look at his birth chart. It's the one on the left here, Rashi chart, the D1. And I'll talk about some things I see there. And then I'll talk about a couple things I see in his Navamsha chart too, which is the next chart that's the most important to look at. So Drake, his uh, big three, the rising moon and sun, are his ascendant or rising sign is Leo, which is ruled by the sun. His moon sign is Gemini, which is in the 11th house. And his son is Libra, which is in the third house. So he's got his uh, ascendant ruled by sun. Moon is ruled by Mercury. And sun is ruled by Venus. So I'll look into this real quick and see a couple things I can see. Um, one thing you always want to look at first when you're looking at a chart is... Uh, to see where the chart ruler sits. And in his case, since he's a Leo rising, uh, Sun is the ruler, and Sun is in the third house in Libra. So, this gives a strong connection to, uh, for one thing, brothers and sisters. Um, that's what the third house represents, but it also represents... Um, Communication, courage, media, um, it's like music, dance, and drama, stuff like that. Um, a lot of stuff dealing with media and communication are, are themes a lot for third house, for people who have stuff in th the third house. So, usually the sun is considered debilitated in Libra. It's fallen sign because it's actually exalted on the opposite sign, Aries. But he has his, uh, the ruler of his sun, which is Venus, is sitting with the sun. So he's getting a little bit of a, a positive boost there. Um, and Venus is in Libra. So it's in its own sign. So it's, it's strong. So he's got sun and Venus there in the third house. Venus is the, you know, the arts, beauty, um, sociability, charm, um, a lot of the positive sides of things. It's a benefic planet. Um, but that fits with the artistic side and the, and, the, and the music that he does. So another thing we can look at is that his 10th house is ruled by... Venus as well, because Taurus is there in the 10th house. You can see on the right, this right diamond. Um, in the left chart on the on the right diamond, where it says 2 and it says Ta, that's Taurus. So his 10th house ruler is in the 3rd. So his Dharma from his first house is connected to the 3rd house, and also his, his, his career, his social standing is connected to 3rd house stuff. So media and communication are going to be really big. With um, with the sun ruling the first house in the third, and Venus ruling the tenth house in the third. So some people might be wondering, wait, but I thought he was a Scorpio, and maybe you know maybe that seems to fit a little bit. Um, 
He's actually a Libra son. Um, in Vedic astrology, they look at uh, the rising and moon as more primary and important than the sun. So uh, Leo would be the first thing, moon, and then and then Libra, moon, moon Gemini. So Leo, Gemini, and Libra. But he does have two planets in Scorpio. He's got Mercury in Scorpio, and he's got Saturn in Scorpio. And Mer- Mercury and Saturn are in the fourth house. So, um, a couple things I can see here. He has a Paravartana Yoga, which is a mutual exchange. So, when one planet is in the sign of is in the sign of another planet and that other planet is in the sign of the other planet. Um, then there's a mutual exchange, Parvatra and yoga. So how this, how this applies in his chart is he's got Saturn and Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio is ruled by Mars. And then you look at his sixth house. He has Mars in Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So you can see Saturn is in Mars' sign, and Mars is in Saturn's, Saturn's sign. So they're, like, communicating back and forth. So these two houses get really reinforced. Um, it's difficult to say what that means exactly. The fourth house usually represents home, the inner life and emotions, happiness, um, home life, mother, family life, stuff like that. Um, but more of the private side of things, usually instead of the out of, out in the world aspect of things. And sixth house deals with obstacles, uh, daily work, uh, struggles, um, health, stuff like that. So it could mean that he puts a lot of work into his home environment. It could mean that his mother um, was a hard worker and ma- made ends meet. Um, but... Uh, there's several significations for that there. Um, but because his Mars is exalted in Capricorn, that's his exaltation sign, and it's in the sixth house, that's a really good thing. Um, malefics are really strong in the sixth house because it, it, it re- indicates that you can overcome competitors. Um, in Vedic astrology, they call competitors enemies, um, but they're not really enemies exactly it's not necessarily like they're out to kill you or something but uh competitors you know like uh people who are in your same field who are trying to accomplish similar things to you things like people that you're up against um because his mars is exalted in the sixth house he's going to be over- able to overcome any enemies competitors anybody that tries to take him down he's going to be able to to withstand that and overcome so that's pretty cool. Another thing that, that plays to the Scorpio thing, besides his Mercury and Saturn in Scorpio, is that his Rahu is in the eighth house. And eighth house is the eighth sign is like the eighth sign. And Scor- Scorpio is the eighth sign. So it's like he's moving towards more of the the secretive hidden side of things, the occult, the metaphysical. Um it could he could be experiencing vast transformations in his life. Um, Ego death, you know, that's kind of represented by the eighth house. Uh, But it could also mean going really deep into things, research, stuff like that. Um, So, but that does represent the Scorpio energy overall, the eighth house. So he's moving towards like Scorpio energy, essentially. So, So you can see, you know, that, you know, in Western astrology, that says he's a Scorpio sun, even though he's actually a Libra sun. There is some Scorpio in his chart to enforce that a little bit. So there, so he, he isn't completely non-Scorpio. He's got some Scorpio kind of stuff going on. Um, another thing I can say about his Rahu K two axis is that uh, Rahu is in Pisces and K two is in Virgo in the second house. So. He's basically moving from from past lives, second house stuff, which is uh, like wealth, uh, speech also. Um, and Virgo represents, you know, like being very analytical, breaking things down by into pieces and understand them, um, being more critical, 
And Pisces is the opposite of that. Uh, it's about letting go, kind of unifying. Uh, it's a very spiritual. Um, it's also associated with creativity and like music too. Pisces is. So he's moving from wealth and analytical ability to the occult hidden side of things and spirituality. So, so that's interesting to see. And then one, a couple other things I can point out here in his birth chart before I move on is he's got Jupiter in seventh house. That's good for having a lot of great partnerships in life. A uh, benefic in the seventh house is good. Um, his moon is in the eleventh house, so groups, gains, organizations are going to be a big factor in what happens in his life. Um, so that's a couple things for the other placements in his birth chart. But overall, what we can see is there's a lot of focus on media and communication. Um, oh yeah, also about his his Jupiter is ruling the fifth house, so he actually has. And it sits in the seventh, so there's um, there can be past life credit for partnerships and relationships. So that's interesting to see. Um, but yeah, he's got some Scorpio energy going on. He's able to overcome competitors. Uh, he's going to have lots of gains working with organizations. He's going to have um, analytical ability from past lives. He's going to be have ability to make wealth from past lives. He's learning more about the spiritual intuitive side of things. Um, and he can yeah overcome competitors with his Mars in the sixth house exalted. So a couple other things I want to talk about. I'll just talk about what I see in his Devam show real quick. Um, his Saturn is in Scorpio in the Navamsha as well. So that's called Virgotama. It's when it's in the same sign in both the Navamsha chart and the Rashi chart. Uh, Navamsha chart is like your, talks about your Dharma, but it's also about later life. Um, like basically what happens after marriage. Um, but it's like the soul of the chart. So it's a very important chart. His Rahu is in Aquarius in the 10th house in the Navamsha. So career is really big. Um, having new ideas or being unconventional is kind of what Aquarius is about. Um, he's got uh, one of the Pancha Mahapurusha yogas in his Navamsha, which is when Venus is in its own sign or exaltation sign in a Kendra. Kendra is the fourth, the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth house. So you see Venus and Taurus in, in the first of the Navamsha. That that indicates that his Venus, you know, stuff with Venus is going to be really strong. Uh, he's going to have charm. People are going to like him just for who he is. They're going to put him in, in positions of leadership or authority just, just because of his social ability and charm. And um, he's going to be associated with beauty, the arts, creativity. Those are all going to be really strong. He also has his moon in the 11th house of his Navamsha. So again, that reinforces the connection to organizations and groups and friends and stuff. Um, and he's got the benefic Jupiter in Pisces in the 11th. So that reinforces the benefic aspect of his friendships. So, yeah, that's about all I wanted to say from his charts. Um, I'm going to do a, a bunch of other Vedic charts uh, for a while. Um, people seem to like the Vedic charts, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but I'll do some more human design ones too. I might get to do human design one for Drake if people are interested. Um, but I'm, I only have a couple more, actually, I probably have a handful of more Michael charts to make that I'll do as well. So just stay tuned to see more Michael teaching stuff, Vedic astrology and human design for all these celebrities. And if you guys are interested in getting a reading through these systems, just message me on YouTube at, or uh, you can message me directly on Instagram, uh, which is the manic scholar. 
T H E M A N I C S C H O L A R. The Manic Scholar. Just message me on Instagram, follow me, and then we can talk from there. And if you want to schedule uh, an appointment with me to go over your Michael chart, your Vedic astrology chart, or your um, human design, or all three together, just uh, let me know, and then we can work on that. So if you guys like this content, please like and subscribe, and there will be more coming. Manning Scholar out.